things we've learned over the past two and a half years at App Store Marketing. Um, talk will last about 35 minutes, and then we'll be heading over to the plenary session. Sound bad? You don't have Hey, everyone, ready for the few brave souls who made it back here at 9 in the morning and after the party last night. Um, so, uh, I'm going to talk to you about App Store optimization. Uh, I've already introduced briefly about myself before that. I'm the design, I'm the VP of inbound marketing at Yellowhead. Um, you know, at Yellowhead, we're a digital marketing agency. We do SEO, PPC, social media, but also, of course, App Store optimization for uh, major clients. We're lucky enough to have uh, a lot of clients who are uh, here at the conference, working with Zingo, with Jaytica, with lots of uh, others. Uh, and over the past year or so, we've uh, seen developers really waking up to the importance of ASO, really uh, starting to take it more seriously, which is great, but over that same time, we're still seeing people making the same mistakes they were making a year ago, making two years ago, so I want to talk about uh, a few of the more common mistakes, uh, a few bits of just general info, and uh, also just uh, uh, some fun tips. Um, there's a lot in this presentation, so I'm going to go relatively quickly, so uh, I apologize for that, and bear with me. First, very quickly, just uh, for those who uh, aren't believers yet, what's all the fuss about? 63% of all users find applications through search, despite that 83% of all applications are virtually invisible in search. That means they cannot be found in keyword or category rankings unless you're searching directly for them. Third, there are over 3 million applications on Google Play and iOS alone. Last time I did this presentation, which was not that long ago, it was over 2 million, and that's because there are something like 5,000 new applications being submitted every single day. Uh, with all that, again, very, very briefly, uh, what does ASO have to do with it? In a sentence, ASO is SEO for applications. Uh, it's about search optimization, making sure that your application gets found, and conversion optimization, making sure that once people find your application, they actually want to install it. Unlike SEO, results are fast and results are dramatic. Changes in text lead to almost instant changes in keyword rankings, which coupled with increases in conversion optimization and uh, conversion rate lead to very quick gains in installs, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So I'm going to jump right into search optimization, making sure that your application gets found. I'm going to talk about Google Play and iOS because those are obviously still the two most dominant stores. Uh, briefly before I jump right in, uh, something to remember about the stores, they come from very, very different backgrounds. Google comes from uh, a background of search. They know how to look at your application, what you wrote, what's in your reviews, what uh, who's using your application, what they're saying, and they kind of can figure out what you're about, but you still need to help them. Uh, Apple, on the other hand, comes from the world of music. Might have, or uh, in, uh, a title might have a song, might have a title, uh, an artist, an album name, and uh, maybe a genre, and that's about it. So Apple comes very much more from a, a, a direction of you have to spoon feed it, you have to tell it what you are about. So moving right ahead, uh, the first thing I'm going to talk about is titles. Titles in iOS and Google Play are crucial, having important keywords in your title is crucial. Uh, that in itself is not groundbreaking, but I'm going to give you a little bit uh, of an example of just how much. Take a look at uh, this picture on the right. These are the top ranking uh, applications for the keyword camera effects. This application in third place, Candy Camera for Selfie, uh, had an over four star rating, over a million reviews, and is frequently updated. Despite that, it is being outranked by these two applications, which both have under four stars, either a tenth or a fiftieth of the number of reviews, and one of them hasn't been updated in over a year. And it's quite simply because they have camera effects in their title. Now we get pushback sometimes from developers who say, uh, you know, my title's my brand name. I don't want to change that just for, uh, just for ASO, just to add a few keywords or something like that. So a few points about that. First of all, this is something that brands have been doing forever. Consider SEO, consider meta titles. It's something that's been going on for years. Second of all, it's really not unreasonable to put in a few keywords to describe your application, particularly if you're not something that's uh, you know, extremely straightforward. Uh, and finally, just consider the alternative. Take a look at these rankings. These are the top 10 rankings for uh, the keyword camera and for the keyword pictures in iOS and Google Play. Take a look for a brief second uh, and see if you notice anything uh, strange. Uh, quite simply, where are Snapchat and Instagram? And arguably, the biggest applications that have anything to do with this in the world are not in the top 10 for pictures or for camera. Uh, now, you can say you know, Snapchat and Instagram don't really need any help, they're doing all right. Uh, but second of all, I mean, acquisition is acquisition, why not add another channel? Second of all, these are major keywords. And third of all, I mean, would it really be so unreasonable for Instagram title to be something like uh, Instagram share pictures with friends? 
Uh, moving right ahead, I'm going to go into keyword lists for iOS. This is another big one. The main concept that uh, people miss out on here is mixing and matching. Uh, Apple knows how to mix between your keywords, mix between keywords in your titles and keywords in your keyword list. Uh, and so I'll go through a brief example of some of the major mistakes that we still see people making. So we're going to go through a fake application here with the title, uh, Slots, Wild Casino Games, Vegas Slot Machines. This is an example of a bad keyword list. Uh, it doesn't use the full 100 characters, it has spaces between keywords, it has repetitive words in the keyword listing title, which is one that we see surprisingly often. A uh, developer will say, uh, slots is my main keyword, I don't want to take it out of my keyword list. If you have it in your title, the title is stronger, it does more, and it's quite simply not, not needed in any waste of space. Uh, there are non-search relevant keywords, which is one we see a lot as well, and we work with an application that had to do with uh, battling dragons, and they had keywords in there, uh, like fire and eggs and scales, and those are things that are uh, you know, maybe related, but they're not things that anybody is searching for, so they're not helping you in a practical way. Uh, singulars and plurals, iTunes in a, in a very basic sense knows how to change uh, plural to singular, singular to plural, and so forth. Uh, I'm going to skip ahead here because we have lots to get through. Uh, this is an example of a little bit of a better list. Uh, it uses 99 to 100 characters. It uses a mix and match. So you see the first keyword is loss, and there's the word Vegas in the title, so this app can now be ranked on Las Vegas. If you remember that Apple needs spoon feeding, if the word loss wasn't in here, the application could not be found or returned to Las Vegas. Uh, it targets long tails, it targets competitors, and a nice little other tip is it uses hyphenated keywords. You can see there it has free type and cell. That gets you free cells one word, free cells two words, and also cell free, even though that's not, not relevant here, and free and cell. Uh, okay. Moving ahead, uh, we'll talk about Google Play descriptions. So Google Play descriptions, Google Play in general, is something very different. Uh, you only have 30 characters in your title, and then you have your description. Uh, it's a little bit more nuanced playing around with them, but one thing that you can do in Google Play, which you absolutely cannot do in Apple, is uh, you can do a great, great job targeting long tails. Take a look at uh, these excerpts of the description of Real Racing 3. It's a nicely uh, written description, but hidden in, or in, hidden in there are basically laundry lists of keywords. Uh, meticulously detailed cars from manufacturers like Ferrari, Porsche, Chevrolet, Lamborghini, Mercedes, Benz, Bugatti, Audi, Ford, Asset, so forth and so forth and so forth. Now, is having something like this uh, going to get you ranked first for the keyword Ferrari? Absolutely not. But this application is ranked for dozens and hundreds of keywords, Aston Martin racing, Ferrari racing games, all kinds of things like these, which are lower competition, they're lower searches, but in aggregate, they make a significant uh, moving on to conversion optimization, getting people to actually install your application. So the most important thing there is when we're talking about conversion optimization here, for the most part, we're talking about graphics, uh, icons, screenshots, featured graphics, and so forth. Uh, the thing that we found that helps the most, more than anything else, is simply making graphics that stand out. Obviously, your graphics should look good, and they should convey your point, but more than that, you want them to stand out from the graph. So, for example, on the left, Tiny Beams, an application we worked with, uh, if you don't have a video and you have vertical screenshots, then you can, for example, use both of your screenshots together to create a sort of a banner which tends to stand out more than others. On the other side, you have uh, some of the uh, rankings, uh, some of the ranking applications for the keyword keyboard. If you take a look there, uh, all of them kind of do the same thing. They're square, they have keyboards on them, a lot of colors. And then you have Flexi, which I'm not even saying is a particularly nice looking icon, but when it's just a circle with plain colors, it stands out to the eye among everything else. Uh, in addition, uh, and we'll go through this really quickly, uh, this is from our friends at uh, Store Maven. They have a, a nice little uh, a statistic that they found through their A-B testing tool. Uh, visitors uh, to app pages largely split into two groups, instant decision makers and explorers, and it's about a 50-50% split. Uh, when, uh, uh, decision make, when instant decision maker comes to your page, they look uh, for a few seconds and decide whether or not to install or to ditch. Uh, so for those kinds of players, your icon, impactful screenshots, big text that doesn't take a long time to read uh, are very important. The other 50% are explorers. They're going to go through and they're going to read your short description. Maybe they'll be in the 1% that actually click read more on a description. They'll flip through your image, through your screenshots a little bit, and, uh, and uh, those other parts are sort of for them. Uh, so, uh, one of the great things that happened has happened in ASO in the past several months is uh, that Google released their A-B testing tool, uh, Google Experiments. Uh, this has allowed us to really stop guessing what we think works and stop trying to see what works through all kinds of uh, strange uh, calculations, but to really start testing. So 
I'm going to run you through uh, a few things about that. This is an AP test we ran for Black Diamond Casino, Rising Tide, uh, Rising Tide Games uh, slot title. Fantastic, fantastic application. The company was just purchased by Zynga. Um, so uh, we tested these three, the right hand three icons versus the control on the left. Uh, and after uh, only a few days, we found that the third icon worked something like 20% better. So this was really a few hours of work and resulted in a 20% increase for them. Now let's talk about a little bit of the uh, methodology. What we like to do here is we like to test things uh, as much as we can uh, separately. So for example, you'll see we change the picture in each one of the icons, but in every single one, uh, the word is casino. After that, we take the winning icon, we test it once with casino, once with slots, once with 777, once with other things like that to see what, where we can get to uh, uh, in the best way. Uh, in addition to that, um, another thing about the methodology there, what we generally do is we start globally. Uh, you can test either in the whole world of Google experiments or you can test region by region. So we start globally uh, and we get to the point where we're finding it very difficult to, to get significant further gains. And after that, we start working country by country. Maybe certain colors work better in France, maybe certain characters work better in Brazil. Um, uh, 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 and also in Apple. So Apple doesn't have any testing platform, but App Analytics has allowed us to become a lot more accurate than things we're doing. Using App Analytics, you can get to sort of basic calculations and conversion rate, and while it's you know, hard to do exactly something like A-B testing, if your graphics are working, if your, uh, the graphics that you've changed to work significantly better than the previous ones, it's pretty easy still to notice a difference. Okay, so some very basic things, very general, very, very general, and not always guaranteed to work. Things that we found that work in icons are eyes, having big eyes in them, catches the attention, breaking the box, making something like a small border and having central character break out of them, which uh, most of the other applications aren't doing, so it looks different, differentiated. Intellectual property is great, but it's not necessarily a silver bullet. Uh, if you'll remember from what I showed you two slides ago, uh, the icon with John Travolta and Olivia Newton John works 20% better than the control, but the icon with John Travolta actually work about 10% worse. Um, uh, text is great. It's amazing how much of a difference it can make to add a little banner to your existing icon that says new or friends or fresh or something like that. Uh, but most of all, most of all, most of all, uh, this is coming back to that same point, icons that work are icons that are differentiated. Um, so one example of a place where this doesn't happen at all is in the world of email. Uh, this is eight of, I think, the top 12 email applications, and they all have exactly the same icon. They're relatively flat. When you add one thing with even just a little change, just a little color, suddenly it becomes the only thing that your eye is drawn to. Um, okay, moving right along, I'm going to talk about localization, thing of the world. So this is something that has been talked about a lot in, uh, in this conference and in other conferences. The U.S. is obviously an enormous, lucrative market and all of that, but today it's still a uh, certain percentage of the world and there's a lot, out, uh, a lot more out there. So when we're talking about localization, we're talking about localization of your app store page, not necessarily your app, though if you have resources for, resources for that, obviously it's great. Uh, and so when we talk about localization, uh, we're talking about, uh, I'll give an example from a different field. So this is McDonald's. Uh, it's a, uh, one of their meals in uh, Middle Eastern countries. They went for different colors. They make a labia, a little bit of a different type of food. And then on the other hand, you get translation, which is something very different. Um, so, uh, again, uh, with the joke aside, um, when we talk about localization, we're really not talking about translating, we're really not talking about even translating uh, well. Uh, when we do localization for applications, we work in 25 different languages, and what we do, what we start with is actual keyword research in every single one of those languages. We look through and find what people in those countries are searching for most, and then we translate well based on, those keyword, uh, based on that keyword research. Um, so just a quick example of that. This is Logdog. It's a great application that we worked with. What they, uh, what they do is basically they detect when people who are not you have logged into your accounts. Uh, and what you, can, uh, what you can see here is if you look at the titles, the titles are translated, obviously, but they also have slightly different meanings in every language. Uh, in English, it's stop hacker intrusion. In German, it's protection from hackers. And in Italian, it's anti-hacker attacks. These things were chosen, even though they're a little bit different than their main message each time, because again, that's what people are searching for. And so the point isn't even that they got ranked, so they got ranked for uh, the terms that are major in those languages. Uh, in addition, localization of graphics uh, is something that uh, helps a lot with conversion rate in certain uh, foreign regions. Uh, on the one hand, you can go for real simple, just straight up swapping out of your English text for localized text. 
Uh, and on the other hand, you can also go for inclusion design, 365 sports with their icon. In different countries, they change it to reflect the most uh, popular local sport and the, the local colors. Uh, and in the end, what it all comes down to. So uh, in the end, this all goes to increase installs. Generally, applications that we work with are already somewhat optimized in English. Uh, but so uh, we go through and make changes there, and it's not uncommon to see a 30% increase, a 40% increase. Of course, there are, there are cases where you see hundreds of percent increases, but realistically, this is more uh, more typical. Now, what you'll notice, or it's difficult to see there, but this is an increase of 30% based off of a base of 2,000 installs per day. Uh, on the lower slide, on the lower uh, image, what you see is the install increase in Germany, which was at a base of about 100 a day and increased by about 200%. And that's totally not atypical to see in foreign languages uh, in ASO. And the thing to remember here is that this is what happened in Germany, but this also happened in like 20 other countries. So in the end, while yes, you know the, the increase in the U.S. is great, uh, often what you see with localization is, is enormous. Uh, in addition, organic draft today is starting to become demystified, whereas before we had pure baseline analysis and all kinds of things and subtract out paid acquisition. In Google Play, for instance, now, uh, you can actually already see uh, exactly how many installs you've gotten from Play Store Organic. And what we've seen from looking at this is really for 99% of the applications, the majority of traffic actually does come from Organic. Um, so we've talked about a bunch of things. There are a whole bunch of other factors that have to do with ASO. Um, your uh, retention and usage and all kinds of things that are that are maybe a little bit harder to play with, but one of the other things which is huge, huge, huge is ratings and reviews. And so I'll walk through an example just to show you uh, uh, how much of an effect this has. I'm going to walk through an example by a uh, slot app which shall remain unnamed, uh, which we uh, don't work with, but at some point in time, this app set its users this prompt. Rate us five stars, give 500 free chips, rate a no, you will lose chips. Now, so they don't actually have a way to know this. They have no way to see this, um, but you know, but users don't know that. So the effect that it had on users was huge. This is an app that went from having one positive or a handful of positive and a handful of negative uh, reviews every day to having hundreds of positive reviews with still only a handful of negative reviews, and the effect was huge. And this is a slot application that went from being ranked on you know, uh, you don't see the scale there, but it's in the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds for words like poker to suddenly being ranked not. Uh, so uh, ratings and reviews is something that you need to pay attention to. Uh, do it yourself. If you can't do it yourself, use an SDK like uh, Appendive, something like that. It's something that's worth paying attention to. Um, okay. Beyond that, there's a whole bunch of tips uh, for Google Play for iOS. I don't think that I actually have time to go through them all properly, but talk to us, and I will send you the presentation. Uh, and uh, in summary, uh, a few points. One, do uh, ASO. There's not too much to elaborate here. Uh, on board. Uh, two, localize your app pages. The world is a huge, huge place and it's a place that's worth paying attention to. Three, constantly pay attention. This makes or breaks an app. Really, again, the majority, for the majority of applications, the majority of installs are organic. It's something you need to pay attention to and it's something that changes over time. It's not a do it once and forget kind of thing. And fourth, which is a little bit uh, contrary to all those other points, is that ASO is not a silver bullet. It is important and not only important, it's crucial. It's something that you must but it's only part of the equation. ASO can help significantly, significantly increase what you have, but on its own, ASO, in the short term at least, is not going to take you from having five installs per day to having uh, 20,000. Mm -hmm. um, and that is that. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.
was a text you use in the update, because each time you make an update on your app, you have the possibility to add a text. Mm -hmm. There are people that just say, thanks for playing, yeah. people that go really into details, do you have recommendations? Yeah, you're talking about the, the what's new text? Yeah. Yeah, uh, great, so that's, that's a good point. Um, it's something that uh, we very much recommend uh, that, you, that you put some thought into. Uh, first of all, in uh, Google Play, uh, Google does actually look at keywords and have texts that are in there. Uh, and second of all, it's something that just users love seeing. There's nothing worse than what's new bug fixes. People mm -hmm. like seeing that you added things, you made the audio better, and there are new characters, and new rooms, and new whatever, whatever, whatever. So it's uh, great also uh, from a conversion perspective. People see that you're uh, working on it, and then yes, it also helps uh, as far as search goes. Going one. <laughs> the rating, um, some people left comment, and you have the possibility to answer to that. Mm -hmm. Do you have recommendations? Should we just go into, like, try to really answer the question there, or just forward with an email address? Uh, so, I mean, uh, improving your, your reviews is, is a whole methodology on its own, inside the app, outside the app. There's a lot, a lot to think about as far as that goes. Um, if you are getting recommend uh, answering in person. Uh, it looks better than just you know saying, hey, sorry, you sent something to this email. It shows other people that are looking at the application that you're uh, that you're paying attention, that you're really working with the users. Uh, and again, in Google Play, uh, Google looks at text and reviews as well, so uh, it can't hurt there either. So suppose you're in the 83% that don't do any of this, and you're looking to get started. Is this a hire a full-time team? Is there a bang for the buck with five hours a week? You know, how does how do you get started on this? Uh, so that's another good question. Uh, and the bottom line is kind of you need to get started on this regardless of what level of resource you have. And then there, there really just goes based on your resources. If you have the resources, uh, you know, based on whatever you think is right, bring someone in the house. You uh, and go with something like that. If you don't have the resources, if you don't have the time, then just find an hour, find two hours, start looking at keywords a little bit, put something in there. There are nice uh, tools you can look at, Sensor Tower, things like that, which have, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, free version, free uh, plans as well. Um, you can go uh, you know, as simple as just log into the Google Keyword Planner, try and look a little bit at what the keywords are, and start putting things in and do a little bit at a time. Anything at all is better than nothing, but again, have the resources, then we're seeing more and more people, A, obviously either going with agencies or really bringing people in house to work on titles. Okay, so uh, if there are no other questions, let's thank Yonten. Okay.